great to have you with me today. Thank you for joining in, as so many people do uh, throughout these days. It's been really encouraging, and it's also good to know that you're walking alongside me as I'm walking alongside you. This week, I plan to look at a few key questions. There are four questions I want to think about. They form the basis of what we call a worldview or a way of looking at the world. And everybody has a way of looking at the world. Not everybody wants to talk about it. Not everybody has formulated it in a logical thinking process. But what I'm suggesting we do is that we do that around these four questions. That is, origins, where everything comes from or suffering, why have things gone so badly wrong, or why is there pain and suffering in the world? Thirdly, how might we put that all right? And fourthly, where is everything going to? Is there any hope? Is there a destiny? These four questions can form the basis of a really meaningful conversation with our friends and family and folks we meet. As we get to understand them, they give, the, we, they give us a framework for what we believe, and they also give us a kind of a, a direction to take a conversation that might lead to somewhere useful with our, with as I say, with our friends. Now, understanding that we're only going to take about 10 minutes on each of these, don't expect a full explanation of anything, but they are to get you thinking and give you most, maybe just the key pointers along the way. Because what we believe about these key things is crucial to everything else. Now, understanding also, I need to put a little rider here, that no human being has full knowledge of anything. That is, except God and Jesus when he was here on earth. Well, he had incredible knowledge, but sometimes it seems as though he limited that for certain purposes. But only God is omniscient, is all-knowing. And that's very important for you and I because sometimes we frustrate ourselves because we try to push into things that we'll never know the answer to just yet. And that can be really quite, a, quite a, a very desperate experience. But what we do have is adequate knowledge of some things that enable us to function and to look at the future, hopefully, or even to endure life now when things difficult come along and to make sense of those things in our lives to some degree. Jesus himself was the master of the question, and he teaches us that we should, I think, develop a similar pattern when we engage with others, and even with ourselves. Ask ourselves questions. That's no bad thing. Why do I believe this? Why do I struggle here? What do I need to do to develop a better understanding? So those four big questions are the things we want to think about for the next four days, and then on the Friday... I'll try to have something summing up maybe to help us. Friday, God willing, will be the 100th recording for them for this year, just 2021. There are hundreds of others prior to that, and I'm planning to take <clears throat> a little break then. And if it's possible then, when I regather my energies and thoughts and ideas, to come back a little later. But we'll keep you informed of that as time goes on. So what do we believe then about origins, about beginnings? Well, evidently, no one was alive at that point. There are no records that exist in the way that we think of writing human history. And scientists study what it's in, in their attempts to try to piece together a story. They find themselves having to make assumptions that may well be either right or wrong. A beginning. A beginning, some may even say that everything has just been there, that there is no beginning. But that doesn't seem to make much sense in, re in regard to the world as we understand it. For everything around us does have beginnings. There is process going on around us. And very few people would accept that the world has just always existed. The Christian worldview is less interested in how long ago it was. Although you might not think that when you listen to the debate that some people have. Is the earth old or is the earth young? That's not really the issue at all. In fact, I think that can be a distraction. The questions the Bible answers... Are, are these more important questions? In the beginning, God created. Genesis 1, 1. God made the heavens and the earth. Scripture doesn't say scientifically how, because it's not a science book. 
it says that God spoke by his decree or by his will. He made everything. And that is the pattern in Genesis 1. God spoke, let there be, let there be. It comes with his authority, his sovereignty, and his creating power. And as you go through Genesis 1, you'll notice there is a pattern. And it may well be a very helpful thing to see it this way. At least as I read it, I understand the core elements of creation are put together in the first part. We've got light, which is very important. Although some people think, well, how can you have light when you don't have the sun and the moon? Actually, you can, because the sun and the moon are not the only source of light. They give out light. Well, the moon doesn't, but the sun gives out light. But it's not the only source of light. God himself is light. You've got then the heavens, and then you have the land. Earth, that is. And then he fills these. Vegetation, lights in the heavens, living creatures and human life. So you have this process going on. And it entirely makes sense, or it entirely makes sense as it is described in Genesis 1. John chapter 1, verse 1, ties up with Genesis 1. You notice the same words. In the beginning was the word. And then, of course, it refers to Jesus. The word was with God. The word was God. All things were made through him, meaning Jesus was there at that time. He was crucial to the creating that was going on. In fact, Paul, when he writes in Colossians in chapter 1 and verse 16 and 17, says this, that by him, by Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. And then it goes on to say, all things were created through him and for him. And in him, all things hold together. Many questions are answered there, aren't they, as we think about origins. Now, maybe not the scientific ones that people are also taken up with, but much more importantly, the why question that science is not able to answer. Why do we exist? According to Colossians, it says we exist for the glory of Jesus, the glory of God. The purpose of creation is much more about God than it is about mankind. Sadly, mankind wants to think that they are the centre and have everything in the universe answer to them. But until we reverse this and humbly see ourselves fall before the Lord and be answerable to him, nothing really makes sense at all. That is true personally for you and I, until I humbly realise that I am answerable to God and bow my knee before him, my life doesn't make sense to me. Our biblical creation account explains so much about life and helps us to understand the core issues. Why do we matter at all? Well, because we are told in Genesis 1 that we are made by God in his image. That's what gives us dignity. That's what gives us value. And that's why we treat one another with value. Have we a purpose? Well, Scripture and Genesis tell us that it's to relate worshipfully, worshipfully to God. And we discover our joy when we do that. Are we safe? Can we really rest? Well, creation underlines the providence of God. God's care over his creation. He made it. He made everything perfect. He made it and said, it's good, it's good, and it's very good. And so we are no longer just living lives of chance, but we have lives of significance and security because there is meaning and a plan and a purpose, even in the pain. God did not abandon his creation. He entered his creation you know that in Bethlehem, the coming of Christ. And he redeems his creation. And one day he's going to remake it a new creation. Trying to understand key things will be really helpful to give us a sensible conversation with our friends and non-believers. Asking them what and why they believe what they do about their or understanding of these things. And how what they think they believe, gives an adequate explanation to the issues of life and gives hope or reason for optimism. That can be one of the most gracious ways of getting into a serious and important conversation. And I think in a time like this, when massive issues are discussed, pandemic has thrown up the possibilities, maybe it's a great opportunity for you and I. Tomorrow we're going to think about why some of the things in the world around us seem to have gone so badly wrong. And we see that every day, don't we? And I look forward to sharing that thought with you as well.